what's up guys, this is Chris, the design lead and graphic designer for the prototype board game Epidemic No One Leaves Alive. Today I'm going to show you a quick run of me painting some concept art for the game, and I'll explain a little bit about it as we go. You can see here that I start off with a pre-posed picture of a subject. In this case, it's one of our other project leads, John. I paint on top of the photo because it lessens production time and ensures that we get the result we're looking for. I start off painting over the skin uh, using a layer in Photoshop that's set to multiply. Then I'll bring the layer back to front and go over any gaps that I've missed. And here you can see I'm doing, uh, getting rid of the overspray on the arms. And then I get to doing the clothes. Start off from top to bottom. Here we got the shirt. Fill in the gaps again. The reason I paint it this way is to get the basic colors down. That way afterwards I can start adding the outlines that make it look more like a sketch and then begin adding the shadow and highlights. Now using some of Photoshop's new bristle brushes I'm able to make the photograph look more like a sketch. Here you can see I'm tracing out the details, tracing where the folds in the shirt are going to be, and where some of the shadows are going to be later on. Now these lines are going to be far less noticeable in the final picture, but for now they do give me a good starting point for where the colors, shadows, and highlights are going to be later on. I start off the faces with the hair doing three to four layers of colors starting with the mid color to the darkest color to the lightest color. Painting the skin, I start off with the shadows because it's easier for me to envision those than I could possibly the, the mid-tones or the highlights on the faces. Adds more dimension to the face and gives a little bit more detail. Start adding slightly darker colors underneath the shadows. As you see, the darker it gets, the more defined in 3D it becomes. The background music that you're listening to is actually going to be included with the board game. Um, it's the soundtrack for it, and in this case, um, this particular song, or well, ambient music I would call it, is from the third level of the game, uh, in which the players find themselves in a library. And uh, it's just ambient music that, that can be put on repeat in the background. Kind of gives a little more atmosphere to playing. All right, here I'm doing the teeth. I don't really study anatomy or, or anything. I just kind of paint whatever I think looks good. Uh, let's get his mouth a little bit bigger. You see he's got some bug eyes here. I'm going to have to fix that in a little bit. A little more detail to the skin. Finally, some shadow on the hair itself. Ah, 
There we go. Smaller eyes. Looks much better. Alright, now I begin darkening the outlines on the on the clothes, trying to fill in where the shadows are going to need to be later on. After the shadow, I paint with a slightly darker color than what the highlights are going to be. And I'm never too afraid about going too dark with the shadows because I know I can lighten them up later on. Finally, we got some highlights on the shirt itself to bring it forward a bit. Add a little bit more dimension. Paint the arms and the hands the same way that I do the face. And naturally, all zombies need a little bit of blood and gore on them. That's how they got to be zombies after all. Which, uh, blood is actually very easy to do. You just do a color burn layer with a dark red color, and then you do a little bit of burning on the out edges. And when you've added a few extra details and a little bit more blood and dirt, you have yourself a finished zombie. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed watching me paint and ramble. Total time of completion of this was probably about two, two and a half hours. And uh, you might see this picture later on in the game itself. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Chris with Epidemic, and I'll see you in Blackrock.